So today we are going to proceed ahead with the basic uh, component that we are going to use in the processor designing. That is called decoder. Okay, so decoder has some characteristics, which is uh, it contains n bit input, and it produces it has two to the power n bit output. For example, if I have one input, then I will have two to the power one output lines, means two lines. Okay, and out of all the outputs, only one of the output will be set to one. So, um, symbolically, you may represent a decoder like this. So here you are looking at this um, um, this kind of um, depiction for the first time. So does anybody know what does that mean? So this uh, representation backslash three. So it, it it is used to represent that this signal is three bits wide. Okay. So there are actually three signals here, and we can represent it by crossing the line like this and write a number three. So it represents there are three lines. So if you have to represent a 32 bit signal, you would just simply write a backslash and write 32, okay? And you will end up using uh, this kind of uh, thing a lot, okay? So if you understand this, so this clearly says that it is a three bit signal, okay? So because of it, three, uh, it's n equals three, so we have two to the power three output lines in decoder, okay? out zero, out one, out two, and one of them will be set to one only for, for any n input combination. So here is a truth table for this one. So here I zero, I one, and I two corresponds to three inputs. And when we have three inputs, you have possible com eight possible combinations. So zero, 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 one, two, three, and so on. So you can see for this combination, output zero is one, for input combination one, the out one line is set to one and all others are zero, okay? Previously, we have already studied that when we have the input combinations and the output um, output values, we can create a circuit out of it, okay? So for example, what will be, what do you think will be um, an expression for out zero? It would be I, I zero bar, I one bar, I two bar, right? Because when all these three values are zero, the output is one. Similarly, you can write an expression for out one, uh, would be would be corresponding to this combination, and so on. Okay. Once you have the expression, the Boolean expression, you can of course create a circuit out of it easily. So that circuit for all the uh, outputs will be enclosed in this box. Okay, so these many gates, these many um, logical components will be uh, enclosed in this um, uh, decoding box. Okay, we are not going to study what will be the, uh, what, how the circuit will look like, but I'm just telling you that this is how the output expression, how the uh, circuit for each output is created. Okay, so if I were to give you an example of designing a one to two decoder, one to two means like n is one, and output is two, two to the power one is two, okay? So there is one input line, let's say S, we can call it S, and sometimes it is called the select line. It activates one of the output signal, out one or out zero, okay? So the logic equations of this could be simply, if I were to ask you like, what is the logic equation of out zero? How would you describe out zero in terms of Boolean expression? Hmm? Simply S bar and out one is S, okay? Understand? We will be using decoder um, for creating our processor, but very high level. I'm not going into the details of what the circuit looks like, but I have already told you how we can create a um, logical component for every output and that will be enclosed in this decoder, okay? Next important uh, component that we should talk about is multiplexer. How many of you are already familiar with this? Multiplexer? Okay, good. In which course? I didn't okay. 2500, okay. All right. So the multiplexer selects one 
out of multiple input sources. So in decoder, you have n inputs and two to the power n outputs. In multiplexer, we have n inputs. We can have n number of inputs, but there will be only one output. Okay? It helps us select one out one input, connect one of the input to the output line. Okay? A if you were to write a program, you can simply um, develop this logic with the help of if else structure. So if, for example, s is zero, connect input A to C, otherwise connect B to C. And um, graphically, you can represent a mux like this. So if when the value of s is zero, so zero corresponds to this signal, select signal. If s is zero, then A will be connected to C. If s is one, A, uh, sorry, B will be connected to C, okay? So the logic expression of this uh, mux is simply this. Again, the, com the main um, point of discussing this is to help you get familiar with the behavior of the multiplexer decoder, all right? So if I ask you to draw a circuit of multiplexer for the following logic expression. Again, this is very high level description, high level depiction of multiplexer you can um, easily determine what the circuit inside this box would look like. So just consider this as an activity for two minutes. Try developing um, multiplexer. And the reason why I'm asking you to um, construct a circuit here is because the next slides are built on uh, this exercise. So how many inputs are there? We have how many inputs? Three inputs. A and B are the main input, and S is also acting as an input, which helps us select whether A should be connected to C or B should be connected to C. A is in this expression. Yeah. No, this is this is a Boolean expression which is defining the behavior of this component, which is multiplexer. It could A could be zero, A could be one. So, just try to analyze this. If S is zero, what do you think will be assigned to C? If S is zero, based on this Boolean expression. If S is zero, then this term will become zero, the second term, right? And this term, the S would become one here, this first literal, and whatever the value of A will be assigned to C. This is how, when S is zero, A will be connected to C, okay? Same as the case with when S is one, okay? Yep. You can simply drive the Boolean expression by following the same designing steps. You have the behavior in front of you that uh, you have three input S, A, B, and then you can write expression, I mean, construct a truth table for these three inputs and then come up with this expression. S um, bar A B. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, sorry? Yeah. Done? Oh, I checked it. <coughs> okay. So let me proceed ahead with discussing the solution, it is sim very simple. You can see we have two AND gates here between S bar and A, S bar where S bar is coming from. We have the input S and we are using an inverter to drive this uh, literal S bar, okay? So we have S bar A here 
and here f dot b and both of them are all together at the end okay so this is the circuit for 2 is to 1 multiplexer two, uh, this is read as 2 is to 1 um, like whenever you see something written like this you read it like 2 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 or 8 is to 1 multiplexer okay so this is the circuit of uh, a multiplexer con containing two inputs and one output select line will always be there for selecting which input should be routed to the output okay so this is a one bit two is to one MOS what do I mean one bit two is to one MOS the input signals are one bit wide I mean A is one bit B is also one bit because C is directly connected to A what if, if we have to create a two bit two is to one multiplexer what we will be doing the logic expression will remain same now here A is a two bit signal B is also a two bit signal what do you think the circuit would look like any rough idea it would simply a replica of the previous circuit so we have the first circuit the first part representing the zeroth bit of signal A similarly we replicate the same thing to represent bit number one okay so it will be the same circuit only that the output is C0 and C1 the output coming from the first part is will be corresponding to C0 and then C1 and similarly we can have as many uh, components as we want if we are creating a multiplexer for three bit signal if it would be a three bit signal then this entire thing will be replicated just to add one more bit okay so you can imagine that if you have 32 bit value just like we have been talking about so far registers 32 bits wide memory locations are also 32 bits wide okay so this is a 2 bit 2 to 1 mux how do we design a 32 bit mux everything will be replicated so 1 2 3 4 4 gates are replicated 32 times okay so this is the circuit of the 32 bit multiplexer and we will be using 32 bit multiplexer in our processor designing so we can on the high level further high level we can represent this is like this so a0 b0 the first mux and b30 30 and a31 b31 and select lines will uh, still be um, selecting all the muxes together okay so if the select value is 0 it will select all a a31 a30 a0 and then we will get the output c0 c30 okay and further we, uh, to make things easier we can simply represent 32 bit mux with this symbol okay so a corresponds to 32 bit signal b also corresponds to 32 bit signal and c output would also be 32 bits okay any question here so decoder we will be using we will be using mux so you should know the behavior of mux how mux works so when selects line is zero for example it will be specified here zero or one so if it is zero then the entire 32 bit values will be connected to the output 32 bit okay similarly for b if a select line is one okay what about four is to one mux so we have talked about two is to one last in the last slide this is still called 2 is to 1 mux but each signal is 32 bits wide when we have 4 is to 1 mux there will be four input lines so to select either of these four input or to connect either of these inputs to output what should be the width of select line hmm? yeah two bits why two bits Why two bits? The previously select line has only uh, was only one bit wide. So if a signal is one bit, it has a value either zero or one. It can help you uh, uh, select two of the inputs, which is connected to zero or one. 
if you have more inputs then you have to select the width i mean increase the width of the select lines okay when it is two bit then you can select zero one two three okay how many of you understood this is there any confusion select line if it is two bits wide then in two bits you can represent a value zero 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 one one zero one one okay so with the help we can tie this one to a b c and d so when the value is one one the input will be routed to z okay that's why we need select lines uh, the width of the select line should be two bit wide get it Well, sorry. D is rooted to C. So we have been talking about the multiplexer. The behavior of the multiplexer is it helps connect one of the input to the one single output. There are multiple input lines. We have to connect one of the line to the output. Okay. So only choose one input and connect it to the output. So the select line will be two bit wide. So again, this is very important thing to understand. If you understand this concept you would be able to easily answer some questions in your exam also okay you might be given a different number of inputs you should be able to based on the input you should be able to identify the width of select line okay all right in in your hdl program uh, which you are going to start uh, from the next lab you can simply write a code using if l if structure to um, to create a multiplexer using python in python programming okay so if select line is 0 z dot next what will be the next value of z is z uh, will be a and same as the case with 1 2 and so on okay